This is Hammond. And Jessica. And you're listening to the Friendly Atheist Podcast. Please go to patreon.com slash Friendly Atheist Podcast to support this show. And let me give a shout out to some of our more recent members who get exclusive bonus episodes Mm -hmm. and ad-free episodes. Mm -hmm. They include Chester C., Sunshine, Eric H., David S., Simon, Lobo Ghost, Mm. Krista L., Mouse and Spouse, Inconsistently Disappointed in Humanity. Inconsistently? Uh Yeah. Thomas L. and Marcus H. Thank you for your support. I just read the names as the computer tells me to. Thanks, guys. really appreciate your support. (laughs) How you feeling? So bad. I'm sick. I feel terrible. I want to go back to bed and watch Bob's Burgers. Let's slam jam through this. We will slam jam through this. Sure. I actually figured then I would start with some... Good news, question mark? I don't like when you end good news with question marks because it always ends up making me mad. (laughs) Yeah. Well, so here's the story, and it'll make you feel optimistic for humanity, maybe. That seems unlikely. (laughs) There's a school district in Washington State, the Prosser School District, and during their meeting a couple of weeks ago, one of the board members, his name is Frank Vermulm, he had a suggestion for the board. He said... Hey, you guys, since everything's perfect and everything's going well, why don't we add Christian prayers to every meeting? Every meeting? Why don't we just pray at the start of every meeting? And then he added, oh, by the way, if yeah, not if anyone is interested, I can do it. Oh, oh, I can totally, oh if you're looking for somebody. If you were looking for someone for this idea I, don't know I just who came could up do with. Oh, wait, you know what? Yeah. I'm also a Christian. Isn't that a funny coincidence? I know. So I'm going to play for you just a short clip of him making the suggestion and then offering to be the person to deliver. Oh uh, boy, my skeleton is going to leave my body. Yeah, have fun listening. Uh, Um, Just something I was going to bring up because we don't get to all the board members don't get to Mm -hmm. talk except for here. (laughs) Um, Just a suggestion that maybe during our meetings that we would open in prayer, like after the pledge, and. You know, I'd be willing to lead it, and um, I just think there's a lot of things, a lot of issues that we, we as a school district, a community even, you know, we, I think there's, we could use some divine intervention. We could use divine, divine intervention. intervention. Thought, I, like I said, I would be willing to, to lead it. So. Why does I think that's a great idea. I think that's a great idea, says Why another board member. Why does he sound like he's from Arkansas? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, that's just his suggestion. suggestion. By the way, another board member, a third of, I think, the five, later suggested, why don't we all take turns saying the prayer? And then the first guy chimes in by saying, you know what? Pastors have already contacted me for this idea I just came up with right now. Uh, to ask for the opportunity to pray at these meetings. Oh, so he wants to bring in outside pastors. Oh, sure. So it's Why not? not just like, let's all pray together, right. it, which is not good, but it's <laughs> let's bring in my buddy, John, right. who has some cool ideas about evolution I mean, while first, he's here. First of all, all of this, obviously, horrible idea. Wildly inappropriate. But secondly, you would hope this idea that we could use some divine intervention. You're on a public school board. Your roles only exist because we need make people making good decisions based on facts, research, common sense on behalf of students. If divine intervention worked, we wouldn't need you. Well, I mean, I would argue that I would call divine intervention just like a dude having an idea. <laughs> like, that's divine intervention, I guess. Well, like, don't attribute anything to divine what's intervention, What's the difference right? between divine intervention and just, like, having a thought? <laughs> According to this guy, no, all thoughts come directly uh, from, from above, God. right? But no, but truly, like, if you think you're, you know, worshiping God and inspiring whatever, like, then you have been praying and you do have divine intervention. You're a vessel, probably. So now probably. vote, right. So like, vote. now do your vote job. Vote the way God told you. And look, if God's direction is so damn important to these people, there's nothing stopping them from praying on the drive to the meeting, praying before the meeting. None of that cross these people's minds. Well, that is always a problem I see with these things. It's like, oh, why don't we all pray? Like, sir, nobody's stopping you from praying quietly in your seat before the meeting starts. I have been to many restaurants where people pray quietly before they start eating. And like... That's and fine, fine, don't ask the waitress to do it with you. No, but I like, have interrupted many people while they were praying because <laughs> I thought something was wrong with their meal. So, <laughs> But yeah, like these people just want to impose their faith on everyone else. There's clearly no 
I there's nothing that crossed their minds that suggests anything but Christian prayers oh, of course. That's would be the... delivered, which is why I feel comfortable saying these are Christian prayers well, that they want. Nobody else in the religious world is that like horny to spread their message to everybody is including places where it's inappropriate. Like it, truly again, we do this all the time, but if a Muslim dude, by Jesus. if a Muslim dude walked in and was like, listen, gang, we are going to pray before things bring your carpets. They, they, of course they would say no because it's inappropriate as is this. Right. So here's, I said, this was a good news story. Here's oh, yeah. where it gets better. After they had that mini conversation we just listened to, Mm. the suggestion was shot down, at least verbally, not by a fellow board member, but by two student representatives who were at the board meeting representing their schools. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, One girl's name is Yoshimi Garcia. Another boy's name is Noah Dempsey. You'll hear both of them in a second. Yoshimi's audio is uh, very soft, so forgive me for that. But here's what the students quickly chimed in. Like immediately after? Yeah, wow. like within seconds. And they're like, I don't know if this yeah, is a good actually. idea. Here you go. I think, Yashami, do you have a question? Um, I don't think that religion should be brought into school. I don't think religion no, should be brought into school. I personally am atheist and I don't think I should. Yeah, girl. So I, I think that there are a lot of people with different religions and I think that would be disrespectful. Holy shit. I would tend to agree. This is um, Noah Dempsey. I think that that should be something that's excluded. I mean, there's already enough controversy when it comes to saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm. Why bring more controversy into something that doesn't need it? That'd be my that's two fair. cents on that. Mm-hmm. And I would say that if that was a decision you would need, you would want to make, that you would also need to consider bringing in those who would be willing to say a Muslim prayer, a Buddhist prayer, a Catholic prayer, any or all of the above. Yeah, for inclusivity. Good You're going to need to have an opening for those things. He didn't mention satanic or atheist invocations, but they would theoretically be in the mix as well. What, how old are these kids? High school kids. Wow, good for them. Uh, Noah Dempsey actually responded to a post I wrote about this, and he said, I never expected our small interjections to an injustice would reach all these people. To answer a few questions, basically, he said, we're all safe. We're not being forced or pressured off the board. We do have allies on the board as well as in the school administration. Um, He said his fellow representative, the the girl you heard first, has chosen Mm. to distance herself from this issue following any controversy. We both have strong convictions against religion, presumably in the government. Sure. And we both know we did the right thing. So... Good for him. Mm. I mean, good for both of them. And again, they had the guts to say what none of the adults in the room seem to understand, that school board meetings are not a substitute for church. It's the board member's job to work for the district and the students, not preach to people who were not asking for it. Yeah, 100%. And, and such a good point made with the Pledge of Allegiance thing of like, and, and a, a good point, like, why That's do we need already. to... Why do we need to bring this into this? Like, it's there's no reason we need to bring more controversial bullshit into a school board meeting. Like, yeah, who? do your job. Literally pray anywhere all the time. <laughs> but you can't make other people do it with you, bud. Sorry. Right. And it, again, the to be clear, the Supreme Court, and I think this is where the board thinks they can get away with it. Mm. The Supreme Court, this Supreme Court, this right-wing court, has already ruled that local governments can allow invocation prayers as long as it's theoretically open to everybody. Mm -hmm. That does not extend to school boards, which are about children, where children could very realistically be present at the meetings. It's a different situation. So the same rules do not apply. I should say, after that meeting, the Freedom From Religion Foundation stepped in and sent a letter to the district reminding them of how unlawful such a move would be. Good. Um, And one of the attorneys for FFRF, Chris Line, also reminded the board that a California school district that did the very thing they are trying to do here got slammed in the courts for it. They Mm. ultimately had to pay more than a quarter million dollars for dragging out a lawsuit that the board eventually lost. Chris Line wrote, students and parents have the right and often reason to participate in school board meetings. It is coercive, insensitive, and intimidating Mm. to force non-religious citizens uh, to choose between making a public showing of their non-belief by refusing to participate in the prayer or else display deference toward a religious sentiment Mm. in which they do not believe. Yeah, that is another good point of like, 
I think Christians should be the most aware that like religion is incredibly personal. Right. What should be incredibly personal. And if you are putting somebody on the spot who maybe doesn't want to come out as an atheist or come out as a Christian or as a non-Christian, like you, why, why, and why, why, why? <laughs> Here's the amazing why, thing. After the FFF the sent that why. letter and after those two students spoke out, mm. the superintendent of the district wrote a response to FFRF. Okay. I'm going to read you the entire letter. Are you ready for it? Uh, this came, I swear, this came minutes after FFRF wrote them. Yeah. It was quick. Dear Attorney Line and Legal Assistance Langer, both of FFRF, we are in receipt of your letter. We have not taken any action on the matter. It was strictly a discussion. <laughs> Sincerely, the superintendent. I mean, that's like, fair. We didn't vote on it. Stop attacking us. That's it was a discussion. fair on his part. Which, yeah. Yeah, fine. It was a discussion. It was a stupid discussion, but also fine. They seem to be aware think- that we can't get in trouble if we don't vote on it, and right. we haven't voted on it. So, like... Don't be mad at us. Not yet. We haven't done anything, which, all right, that's fine. But the reason they may not vote on it, and they didn't at that meeting, maybe they will at the next one, if that doesn't happen, if they don't vote on it, it's very likely because two students spoke up and FFRF chimed in to remind them that their job is not to cosplay as preachers. Mm. It's to help students. Yeah, they should be. Those kids should be really proud of themselves. That's that's outstanding news. Yeah, fantastic. Let's get to a different story that, It's funny, I started working on this one story, and then I realized, wait, I have another story about this. It's the same story in another state. And this happened over and over again this week. But here's the first story I wanted to bring up about this. Republicans in Arizona introduced a bill recently that would just ban satanic displays in public spaces. That doesn't feel legal. Doesn't. Doesn't. It feels aggressively unconstitutional, in fact. Uh Uh-huh. This seems to... It comes months after a satanic display that we talked about Mm. in the Iowa Capitol. It sent conservatives reeling. Is that the one that got destroyed? It's the one that Mm. got destroyed. In fact, just last week, the guy who destroyed it was charged with the hate crime because he specifically said, I'm destroying this because I don't like this particular religious group. Wait. Wow. It wasn't just a vandalism charge. It's a vandalism charge with, like, a hate crime addition. Is this the... I'm I'm curious I if people I don't know. Remember, I don't remember if hate crime uh, has been applied to things like this in the past. Okay, good. I'm glad but, you're on the same page as me. I'm very curious if anybody else knows of it, because this seems unprecedented. Yeah, usually they just destroy atheist displays. Yeah, and just, then say, and you like, don't know who it is. Suck. Right. This guy was so adamant about broadcasting why he was doing it wow. that it's very easy to say uh, he's charged with a hate crime. Anyway, that's not even the story here. Oh. But that Iowa Capitol display got so much attention that these Iowa Repu- uh, Arizona Republicans are like, well, we don't want that happening here where we've had run-ins with Satanists. What's with Arizona? Oh, man, so many like, things. Like, what is with it? Like, New Mexico's pretty chill. What's going <laughs> on with you, Arizona? I think it's the desert. It, it doesn't. Could it's be. the heat. Oh, yeah, because New Mexico is famously temperate. It's, <laughs> it's Antarctica there. <laughs> um, so this is Senate Bill 1279. <clears throat> it is called the Respect Act. And that stands for, are you ready for this? R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Find out what it means to me. Right. Reject escalating Satanism (laughs) by preserving essential core traditions. They tried so hard to slam words into there. They had Satanism for the S. And they're like, what else can we do? And they built around it. A lot of the uh, FFRF from last week. What did they call themselves? Like Freedom Flag? Oh, yeah. (laughs) There was a student group that was deciding what religious flag or non-religious flag to put outside their school building, and they called themselves FFRF. (laughs) Ha, ha, ha. And they couldn't think of a good way to, what what does that stand for? So and it was just word salad. Yeah. It was like freedom of flag respectfully flying or something, something like, like that. that. Like, what? Yep. So I've here's the whole all week. Here's the whole bill, besides telling us what respect means. Mm. It's literally there's three parts to the bill. It's copied and pasted over and over because they're saying we're gonna add a couple lines to different parts of our state code. But all the lines basically say this: satanic memorials, statues, altars, or displays. Or any other method of representing or honoring Satan. We'll cover your bases there, bud. May not be displayed on public property in this state. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I had a reporter call me this week 
And she pointed out something that I didn't even recognize at first. I knew the guy who sponsored this bill is a Republican in the state. Uh, I'm sorry, a first term state senator oh. uh, in the Arizona Senate. His name is Jay Kaufman. He used to be a member of the state house. Mm. He's most infamous for being one of Arizona's fake electors for Trump back in 2020. Oh, so, like, I knew this guy yeah. is like a mega cult of sorts. What she told me, the reporter is like, oh, no, he runs the Freedom Caucus. Which is hilarious because wow. they're all about freedom. What do except, you think freedom <laughs> means, sir? Except for actual freedom. So he's joined in this bill by a dozen other Republican co-sponsors who don't seem to understand that the Establishment Clause doesn't allow them to exclude one particular religious icon just because they disagree with whatever they think it represents. Mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm. thing is, if we know anything about satanic monuments, at least the kind that the satanic temple has been putting up, sure. one, they only go up when there's a Christian monument mm -hmm. already in place. But two, they don't believe in Satan. So yep. what are you so afraid of? Yep. In Arkansas right now, we've Jason Raper, the guy who used to be in the state legislature, there is an ongoing lawsuit involving Satanists who sued after guys like him rejected their statue of Baphomet because there was a Ten Commandments display on Capitol grounds. Mm -hmm. Like, the Satanic Temple doesn't act unless there's Christian precedent, mm -hmm. and then they want to play by the same rules. Yeah. But by singling out one religious group's monuments or displays for exclusion, so embarrassing. presumably when all other faiths would be allowed, right. this bill, if it passes, it would almost certainly trigger a lawsuit. Of course. Um, of course. And also, going back to the respect title for a second... What is escalating Satanism? Because if we look at the Satanic Temple's code, mm. it, it, what are we afraid of? Compassion and empathy? Because that's what their statement reads. These are our fundamental tenets. Well, the reality of the situation is that the Satanic Temple is doing exactly what they're supposed to be and doing what um, the Flying Spaghetti Monster never could have gotten done, which was 10, 15 years ago, sort of the, the same version of like kind of trolling Christians of like, oh, I believe in a Flying Spaghetti Monster. You have to teach this, too. Mm -hmm. If it's my sincerely held conviction, mm -hmm. then I get to play by your rules. And and that was a way to point out hypocrisy in, you know, religious laws and And, and to be clear, like there is a difference. The Satanic Temple does have IRS designation well, as yeah, a religious group. That's what I was going to say, is that, like, the Satanic Temple has been able to escalate this to a point that it, it is making its point much better than I think the Spaghetti Monster ever could have because Satan is somebody who is recognizable in the Christian community. And it's just incredibly easy to like trigger these Christians into panicking and then suddenly have to learn a really hard lesson about the freedom of religion. Yeah. Uh, also the respect title, what essential core traditions are Arizona Republicans trying to preserve? I assume they involve religious supremacy, Christian supremacy, but they don't say. I feel like that's a good question for a reporter to ask. Like, mm. so what are you trying to preserve sure. that you're so afraid of? They don't say in the bill anywhere. You Sometimes they include definitions in bills. This one does not include any definitions of anything. Like definition of respect or like, like escalating. Here's what Satanism means. Got here's you. what oh, tradition, whatever. What, the terms we are using so in this bill. So it's just fast bill. and loose. Yeah. I mean, Bill's, here's the thing. I'm not afraid this is going to get passed. Arizona has a Democratic governor. She's not going to sign off on this. Bills like this, though, they're not introduced because there's any chance of them passing. They're introduced to placate conservative Christians who fantasize about it, living in a theocracy. Mm -hmm. They're a reminder that Christians like Hoffman here believe they are superior to everyone who doesn't share their faith. Mm -hmm. They intend to use the government to codify that into law. Mm -hmm. Um, I asked Lucian Greaves, the co-founder of Sat the Satanic Temple, so uh, what do you think of this, you know, ridiculous bill? Mm. He called it frightening. He said, quote, not because I worry that it'll pass, but because it has no hope of passing and is so flagrantly unconstitutional that it demonstrates the most horrific incompetence of its every signatory from the Arizona Senate. Yeah, that's for, well put. For an actual senator to write and or sign such a hopelessly illegal, petty, and futile bill is to announce utter and complete ignorance as mm -hmm. to the function of their office and total disregard for the services they are expected to perform as public representatives. This feels very similar to me um, of the trigger laws that happened when Roe v. Wade fell. Of everybody had these like kind of slapdash laws put together that were as soon as they went into effect, all of a sudden everyone was like, "Oh, these are unenforceable, <laughs> <We> unclear." <were. laughs> like, we, like no abortions for anybody ever. 
It's like, well, what about... And they like, didn't intend for those to go into effect, but as soon as Roe fell, right. they are in effect. And it's like, well, then what about a miscarriage? What yeah, about- and then everybody's scrambling to understand what this vague and scary law means. This feels right. very, very similar. Their attempt to make a statement exactly. through the law backfired, exactly. and now they're trying to put bandages everywhere. Exactly. The interesting thing about this bill in Arizona, they had a committee meeting. Uh, the Committee on Government met on Wednesday morning. Um, I think there are six members of the committee that who were there, one of them was Senator Juan Mendez, who was openly atheist mm. and fantastic. Mm. And he was the one person who raised many of the points we were raising here. Mm. Like, what is it that you're afraid of? What do you think is going to happen? What about the unconstitutionality of it? Yeah. The Arizona GOP put out a tweet earlier. Uh, well, they put out a tweet on Wednesday saying, this Democrat wants to support Satanists. Yeah, it's like, that's right. You got it. Yeah, what are you afraid of? Compassion, empathy. Which of those do you not like? Mm. So there was one voice of reason in the mix, do but the what other that will. It's a whole of the law. The right? other Republicans in the committee passed it out of committee, so it's it's not dead yet. Isn't it's still it? going. It's so embarrassing. This is going to be a. <sighs> it should be embarrassing, I... but compared to all the embarrassing things the Republicans have done, this is probably low on the totem pole true, there. True, 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 true. So I said there are uh, multiple stories just yeah. like this. Well, guess what? Republicans in Iowa... Iowa? <laughs> Republicans in Iowa are doing basically the same thing Iowa here now. Iowa's such a strange state. Weren't they the first state to pass gay marriage? Were or they? like early on in gay it's marriage? It's been too long. Yeah, My mind has I been deleted before 2016. State. Yeah, so... This comes days after Arizona did it. But now on Monday of this week, mm. state senator, wait for it, Sandy Salmon. No. Yep. Yep. She introduced a bill. S-A-L-M-O-N? Th- you got it. Wow. She introduced a bill that would ban satanic displays or the practice of Satanism on state property. And at least it makes sense in Iowa because they had that display. Right. But this one goes broader. Sure. You got uh, it. <laughs> Her bill is much longer in length, and it's worth discussing in some depth because it's stupid from the beginning, and it's glorious. This one isn't just an attack on religion because, of course, groups like the Satanic Temple do not actually worship Satan. Mm. This one goes after groups that reference Satan or Satanism and calls on the government to pick a side. Okay, we're going to go through this. I know what you're thinking. We're going to get back to it. But let's talk about this bill. There's no way you know what I'm thinking. Oh, I know everything (laughs) you're thinking. All right. It has like seven parts to it, all right? Christ. Part one, the state or any political subdivision of the state shall not recognize organizations or individuals who refer to Satan as a deity, worship Satan, or reference Satan or Satanism as part of the organization's or individual's religious practice as an establishment of religion. Isn't Satan a deity in the Bible? Thank you. Thank you. There you go. I read the Bible. Who references Satan? Christian preachers. Mm -hmm. But apparently, if you reference Satan, and that's part of your religious practice, the state can't recognize you. I think she just banned Christianity as being recognized by the state. This is very, like, book banning, accidentally bans the Bible. feels very similar. I don't think she thought this through. Oh, you don't think they thought Uh this through. That's so strange, because they usually have so much thinking through. Yeah, but even if, I mean, Christians believe Satan is a fallen angel. They make constant references to the devil. No one believes in Satan more than white evangelical Christians. Mm -hmm. And Christians believe in Satan far more than the Satanic Temple does because they don't. Yeah. But obviously. I mean, also Satan's a pretty sympathetic character in the Bible, if you ask me. His only fault was not wanting to be blindly obedient to... I forgot the number. I mean, he only killed 10 people in the Bible. God kills well over a million. Really? Oh, yeah. Who does Satan kill? I should read it again. Uh, a handful of people, and I think God made him do it. So, <laughs> but again, even if you put aside the Christian, I mean, God oopsie, killed his literal son, so I don't think like homicide. And is God tried his, to get oh, another no, no, guy to kill his literal son. Oh, yeah, I it goes on for a while. That. But this gets Guys, to the don't heart. Kill your son. <laughs> Can that try just be a, really hard just not to try really hard not to kill your sons? That one's not one of the commandments. I know it should be honor yeah. they father their mother. I mean, thou shalt don't not kill, your... but it doesn't get specific. No, it doesn't. So this gets to the heart of religious freedom, though. The government is forbidden from restricting rights from people on the basis of their faith. That applies to Satanists, atheists, Muslims, and Christians. You can't tell the government, well, yeah, but th- that's an exception to the rule of discrimination. Well, the thing is, they don't understand that 
freedom of religion means their freedom as well. <laughs> and they just think that anybody who wants to like be careful about where we're spreading religion is like personally attacking them, which like, you know, I have depression. I think everybody's mad at me all the time, but these guys really take it to another level, huh? They try so hard. So hard. Part two of the bill. Displays, symbols, or the practice of satanic worship shall not be allowed on public property, in public schools, on property owned by public schools, or on any property owned by the state. I'd better not see any five-pointed stars at that fucking Capitol this Christmas, <laughs> because I swear to God, Satan is there. Right? Five-pointed I mean, stars is his thing? Upside down? Uh, yeah, it's like the goat. Sure. Oh my God, you don't know anything cool. Nothing. Since no one's clamoring for satanic worship in public schools, I think the intention here is to stop after school Satan clubs that have popped up oh, in reference sure, to sure, Christian sure, sure, Good sure, News sure, clubs sure. because I repeat, the satanic temple only forms those clubs in elementary schools where Christian clubs already exist. You yeah. can't allow one without the other. That's the whole point. Uh, so if this passed, that would be a lawsuit in the making. And guess what? Those groups also don't worship Satan. Yeah. Number three in her bill. Oh, God. Any act of satanic practice or worship that involves the ending of a life or the shedding of blood, whether the sacrifice be an animal or human, is prohibited. I feel like we already have laws on the books that say you can't <laughs> sacrifice children. I don't think we need to introduce a right. new law. Yeah, I'm not sure or, where the... Or if I'm being frank, goats. I don't think anybody is like... I'm trying like to remember. Like killing lambs for their ritual. What is he ta what is she I mean, talking about? That's in the Bible. It's not what Satanists are I doing, mean, though. I mean, that's fair. But again, fine. If you want to ban animal and human sacrifices, I'm all for it. Like yeah. you said, though, again, already in the law. Not anti-murder. I want to be... I am anti-murder. I'm not... <laughs> Shut up, Jessica. Yes, please clarify. No, please clarify your stance on the murders. I don't think murders should do. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> it's all right. But again, this is... I think where you might... Why would she put this in here? I think it's because the Satanic Temple has argued that they have a religious abortion ritual and that banning abortion violates their religious freedom. So if you're saying you can't end a life or shed any blood, yeah. I wonder if she thinks this can be used to protect fetuses somehow. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's where she's going with it by pretending fetuses are like humans or something, but that, that <sighs> thought. That's fine. And then, of course, there's no penalty listed in the bill for anyone who violates these rules, but it says anyone who violates these laws, if this bill is passed... Uh, is subject to a criminal... It's, it would be a criminal a offense criminal subject offense. to prosecution under the state of the law. She wants to make it a crime to practice Satanism, however it's defined, in public spaces. I mean, I, I know I bring this up a lot, but it really uh, kind of chaffs my ass when Christians are so on and on about these, like, hypothetical, I heard that people are sacrificing children thing and we need to protect them, yada, yada, yada. And then every time... A youth pastor comes out and has been molesting kids, or a Catholic priest is out and is molesting kids. They're like, mm, no, no, it's, that's fine. One bad apple. Like, the, their their uh, a, a desire to tilt at windmills instead of actually solve real real problems that are really happening is obnoxious. So there's another part of the bill. This mm. is the last bit of it, second page, basically. And this time, there's no new rules. It's just uh, Christian nationalism in writing. So the first bit says, the General Assembly finds that the Constitution of the state of Iowa acknowledges the supreme being to whom we owe gratitude for blessings received and upon whom we depend for future blessings. It's wild, wild Which, that Iowa is going on about their blessings from God because they've been having a rough <laughs> couple of years. <laughs> and also, why do you need that in a law? What do you... What? To an end. But Wait, yeah, the Iowa Constitution so does time. make a reference to a, quote, supreme being in the preamble of their constitution, just like every document yeah. did hundreds of years ago. But there's literally nothing about God in the actual document, just like the U.S. Constitution. Oh and both of them are very explicit about the separation of church and state. In fact, the Iowa Constitution says the General Assembly shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Copy-paste from the U.S. Constitution. So that's messed up. She thinks the common rhetoric of the time establishes her religion as the official position of the government. Then there is a long section in which she says, 
the General Assembly finds there's a wide range of differing views among citizens regarding which establishment of religion or religions represent the one supreme being upon which we depend. Mm -hmm. Yada, yada, yada. But we're not granting any favored status to any establishment of religion. We're not saying it's Christianity, Mm -hmm. she explicitly says. Mm. We're just saying... But we want to be clear. There's a supreme being... And, and monotheism counts, apparently. Monotheism, she's saying, is the official position of the state of Iowa, which also is an establishment of religion. Yeah, bad news for Hindus, eh? Yeah, right? Um, she suggests belief in God, if not a particular label, is the default in Iowa. And that is just as egregious a statement. It's so obnoxious. So, yeah. Like, truly, it's like they've never left their town. They're like, well, everybody thinks exactly like I think. I know, when like, you live in a bubble, truly. life must be and like, so nice. And, like, Iowa has some really good schools. It's not like it's, like, this rambling, there's no intellectuals, everybody will leave. Like, Iowa's a good, like, University of Iowa is a great school. Like, right. what are you guys doing? You make yourselves look so dumb. And then the last part of the bill. Oh, the General more. Assembly finds that good and evil exist. It is the duty of the government to play an appropriate role in protecting the inhabitant residents of Iowa from evil while encouraging and facilitating good. I, as soon as somebody uses the word evil in a kind of, in a way like this, it just sends And I know you're thinking, are there definitions in this bill? No, no definitions of what good is, what evil is. Because evil is just such an ephemeral thing of like, you know, like a person is a person evil? Are their actions evil? I think evil is just too loaded a term of to course. pretend that like there's any definition. And because the whole I think point. this bill is evil, so it's stupid on right. its face. This is the whole thing about taking positions on policies. Like, what about someone who has an abortion? Mm. Is abortion good or evil? Same sex marriage, good or evil? Guns, good or evil? evil. Elected officials are constantly debating what policies are doing to promote good or evil. But to say God is good and Satan is evil ignores Mm. every horrible thing God does in the Bible. Not that I love to quote Richard Dawkins here, but this is a fair quote. The God of the Old Testament is arguably the most unpleasant character in all fiction. Mm -hmm. Jealous and proud of it, a petty, unjust, unforgiving control freak, a vindictive, bloodthirsty, ethnic cleanser, a misogynistic, homophobic, racist, infanticidal, genocidal, philicidal, pestilential, megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, capriciously malevolent bully. Unquote. I mean, he had some good ones. Yeah, there's some so, good ones in there. The people of Iowa, though. What's philicide? Is it kings? Uh, horses? I don't know. I that would be don't, equicide, idiot. I don't do stuff. Daughter or son. Really? Yeah. Huh, I don't know that one. So the point is, though, like, if you're doing all that stuff, if you're saying that's the good part. Regicide is queen. King there queens. you go. If you're promoting goodness, mm. I mean, you got to define that somehow. Mm. You can't just say the word and assume we all know what you're talking about. And again, if you're saying Satan is evil, what are you talking about? Is it the type of Satanism practiced by the Satanic Temple, which right. is clearly what you're going after? Because right. if you look at their ethics, at their stated seven fundamental tenets, Mm. those seem pretty good. So, I mean, ultimately, there is one more section basically saying the General Assembly finds that all people have freedom of conscience. We're not recommending Satanism. We're just saying, you know, anyone can practice Satanic worship at home if you want to, but the government shouldn't be uh, allowing you to use public space. Yeah, it's wild as I kind of think that about religion. You would think. And again, if that's meant to be a breadcrumb, it's still useless because we already know people can practice or believe whatever they want in the privacy of their like, own home. When you say breadcrumb, I don't think I understand what you meant. Like, if you want to say, look, I'll give you some, you could still be uh, a Satanist gotcha. at first. You just can't do it on public property. Sure. But treating one religious group differently from all the other ones, that's not just illegal. It's a slippery slope. Mm-hmm. Government should not be playing that game. Yeah, so, it's bad news. Again, I, the real problem here, I think she thinks the real problem is that Satanists requested a display at the Iowa Capitol over the winter. Mm. And she thinks, you know, not no all, more. <laughs> instead of going after the bigots like the vandal who, van, the guy who vandalized it, she's trying to punish the people whose religious oh views are God, different from heaven, her own. What a good point. 
It's like truly like, oh, I got robbed. Uh, we're going to make it uh, illegal to be in public with things that you can rob with <laughs> like, or be robbed by. Like, sure, it's just why not? stupid. Right. Go after the actual problems here. Yeah, what a good point. Incidentally, she's also a mega cultist no. and conspiracy theorist who tried to overturn the 2020 election. Mm. Um, to be clear, I don't think Republicans in Iowa are going to pass this bill since it's so stupidly illegal yeah. and dead on arrival in any court. But again, you don't file these bills because you think you'll get them passed into law. You file them to send a message Mm -hmm. that, hey, Christian extremists, I'm on your side. It's so funny to me that there's still literal laws on many states' books that say atheists can't hold office. And literally last week we talked about how nobody has the political capital to go after those. And yet Christians have the political capital to be the, to just make the dumbest, most pointless decisions. To Like, it's so... What are you doing, people? Yep. Why are you doing it? What are you doing? You don't need to do this, but you've chosen to do this. It's a horrible idea. Um, and, okay, I figured let's take a break from all that. We'll talk about something totally different a for break. a second. Uh, a recent Gallup poll. This was surprising to me a little bit. There was a Gallup poll that asked people, do you think these professions have, you know, high? What do you think about their honesty and ethical standards? Do you think they you would you rank them very high, mm. high, low, very Where does low? Podcaster fall. Podcaster in is at negative seventeen oh, percent. You hate to hear it. I know, and so everyone seems to be lower on the list these <laughs> days. Uh, <laughs> only, but what's surprising here is that trust in religious leaders is at an all time low. In really, nineteen eighty five. Americans, 67% of Americans said clergy members have high or very high honesty Mm. and ethical standards. Mm. Today, that number is at 32%. Wow. Yeah. That's that's less. Only 32% of Americans say like, yeah, if all I knew about someone is that they're a member of the clergy, I trust that they're ethical, good people. And how many, what's the percentage of people who are... Who are Christian? Like, I would just love to know. Yeah, so it's I, like, what, 60% of Christians and only 40% of people believe that <laughs> priests are to be trusted? There's something wrong with the numbers. Yeah. Who do you think ranked highest in terms of professions, in terms of ethics and honesty? Which profession got the highest ranks? And this is a uh, everybody's poll, not everybody's just Everybody's poll, that's correct. And this is a third time in a row this group has been ranked number one. Really? Yeah. Third time in a row. I mean, so my gut is like teachers and doctors, but those have taken somewhat of a hit in the last five years. Sure, yeah. Um, and priests, obviously, not doing great. Right. Police, not doing great. Nurses? You win. <laughs> it is nurses at oh 78%. I'm genuinely really proud of myself. Yeah. Nurses, 78%. Engineers were... Uh, at 60%. Because again, of it's like, why would you be sense. mad at them? Yeah. Dentists fared well. Doctor, medical doctors Did fared they? well. I mean, by well, I mean above 50%. <laughs> uh, pharmacists were up there. Cops took the top spot of the minorities. Uh, 45. The 45%. Uh, fewer oh, like, than half. Oh. But close to half. More than I would say. More, yeah. Um, and clergy has dropped eight points since 2019, right. and they're at 32%. Lowest on the list at 6%? Politicians? Politi- members of Congress specifically. Oh. Uh, senators were at 8%, this a little cold better. cold medication is making me smarter. I know. <laughs> governors did better than that. Union leaders did better than governors at 25%. Uh, I wish I'd had a list to look at. I anyway. wouldn't have come up with union leaders on my own. But yeah, like, look, politicians, journalists, pharmacists, they get less trust than ever before, mm. sometimes with good reason. You guys should really trust your pharmacists. I've been writing a lot about I mean, them. They're hope. a really important member of the <laughs> medical community. And under, you need, a lot of places you need a doctorate to be a pharmacist. It's called yeah. PharmD. There you go. But, like, the clergy number has to sting because those other professions, I mean, you would hope they are doing a good job and people like them, but those other professions aren't founded on the idea that everyone in it is, like, a moral leader. Right. So why is this happening? Christianity Today pointed out that Americans are also less likely than ever to know a pastor with fewer than half belonging to a church, and there are more Americans than ever who don't identify with a religious faith at all. 
But also, I don't know that that explains a lot, because, like, I don't know a ton of nurses, dentists, and veterinarians who fared very high on this ethics and honesty scale. Sure. But also, I know the gist of them, and I generally trust them. Yeah. I mean, I think they're, they have high ethical standards as a default mm-hmm. in general. Um, but more, I mean, but clergy, even if you don't personally know one, you have good reason not to trust them unless you know more. I've watched the news. I know. If you turn on, I mean, there are scandals. There are clergy sex abuse scandals. Constantly. There are the politicization of churches where they are just wings of the Republican Party. I want to say one time I text Hammond a story about a pastor getting um, getting arrested for like abusing children or something like that. And Hammond's response was, that happens so much, I don't even cover it anymore. It's true. It's like he literally was like, yeah, this happens every day. I, I had to yeah, weed what's out. What's special about this one? Which is fucked, but yeah. also like such a sign of the times. And like, surprise, surprise, when all of the Jeffrey Epstein people got <laughs> got named, it's like, oh, not a lot of drag queens or, <laughs> or teachers, mostly just right. rich, powerful people who right. abuse Cool. So in addition to the fact that when you hear about a clergy member in the news, it's mm. probably because of something mega-ish they said or a sex abuse thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, evangelicals still have their anti-moral positions on everything. Right. So all of that. Why would you trust someone who has such bad ideas about obvious things? Well, and and that goes beyond just you're wrong about the most core <laughs> part of your belief. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like when you talk about morals, like, in a religion, you make up your own morals. So, like, right. whether or not you're moral, if your morals are reject trans people and you're, like, quote-unquote moral, that's what makes you a bad person. Yeah, and even if you talk about pastors who have not behaved badly and done all these horrific things, mm. many of them still hold beliefs that are untrue, harmful, bigoted. I mean, the biggest denominations in America, Southern Baptists, Catholics, they have failed to deal with their sexual abuse scandals mm-hmm. and crises. The most powerful, the ever powerful, I should say, white evangelical political bloc, voting mm-hmm. bloc, they continue to carry water for the most corrupt presidential candidate in history while mm-hmm. ignoring his uh, dictatorial fantasies. Mm-hmm. Purity culture, patriarchal thinking are still popular among younger conservative Christians. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you're looking for ethics and morals... You you shouldn't start your search at a local church. Yes. You know? Correct. That should not be your starting point. Yeah, you should In- give us a call. <laughs> right, right. Interestingly enough, college graduates, I was surprised by this, they were more trusting of clergy members really? than non-graduates, 38% to 29%. I don't know what to do with that information. I know. That's I, very counterintuitive. That was surprising. Republicans and Democrats felt the same about the clergy. Mm. That was also surprising really? to me. Like, Republicans may not trust them but also they need them so they stick by their side but also deep down they're like well i don't trust these people that's not great (laughs) i don't think they're ethical there are there's other polling we're all after power they're just doing it different than me (laughs) there is other polling that suggests that even if they have low ethics ratings people treat priests just like they treat their members of congress like i trust mine I don't trust the sure. job in general. Sure, sure, sure. That you makes know? sense. You you hate Congress, but you like your own representative. Yeah, that's one of the things that people talk about. Everyone hates Congress, but the re-election rate in Congress is astronomical, and it's mm-hmm. because of that exact reason. Like, oh, I like my Congress person. Everybody else is a bad guy. I don't know if the profession can do anything to regain trust. I don't know how you reimagine the profession when the largest denomination's core beliefs mm. involve all the same broken ideas that led people to walk away from organized religion in the first place. Yeah, and they're not adapting in the way they needed to. They've kind of missed that boat because now at this point, if they do kind of come around, it's very obviously because their numbers were down on their own beliefs yeah, and they I, need to play out some new beliefs to see how they can get those coffers full. Yeah, if I think about who do I think has high integrity, ethics, and things like that, it's yes, Me. you, clearly. <laughs> it's like people speaking truth to power. Mm, we're talking mm. like labor leaders, it's very progressive. It's those kids in their fucking those, school. Yes. Those are brave kids who are doing the right thing. Yes, it's, you know, politicians who are willing, even Democrats willing to say, no, my party's wrong on this and we need to be better like those are people i look to for moral clarity it's not automatically someone with reverend in front of their name Mm -hmm. one upside for pastors in all of this and this is how christianity today put it 
positive perceptions of clergy among young people jumped by 10% compared to 2022. Like, more that's young people like them now, like clergy members now, than before. What Maybe is that's people? a sign is of hope. Is it children or is it young adults? I think uh, under 30. Huh. Yeah, so that could that's be a sign weird. of hope for the profession, or it could be ignorance about how harmful pastors it are. People aren't paid attention to the news. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's a large percentage because of a smaller sample size. I don't know. Mm, that's worth keeping point. an eye on. But, like, the overall trend, though, it's not very promising if you're sure. a clergy member. That's too bad. Not too, too bad. bad. It's good. for them. Yeah, good for everyone who's been saying all this forever. Right. right. Hmm. Let's talk about the other uh, bill that's being passed in multiple states now. And this has to do with Christian chaplains in public schools. Oh. We talked about this a while ago because Texas not just proposed a bill to put chaplains in schools. They passed it. They enacted that thing. That's a law now in Texas where school districts have the ability to hire untrained religious chaplains to replace trained professionals. And this this policy was r- roundly rejected by chaplains. By religious chaplains. By chaplains. Yeah, they, were, they were like, they are, we now, can't do this. They are literally begging districts not to go through with it. Have you ever dealt with a crying teenager? It's fucking impossible. Every day. Yeah. Well, you make them <laughs> cry. That doesn't feel like the same. Yeah. So <laughs> critics have been saying for a while now, this is obviously nothing more than a way to shove Christianity into public schools. Right. The defenders of these chaplaincy bills say it's a way to improve students' mental health at a time when schools are understaffed when it comes to social workers and counselors. Why are they understaffed, Texas? Yes. Why are they understaffed? Texas has a budget surplus. You're fucking lying to me and right now. And they are now. not using any of that to uh, train and hide. I don't know. Give back money to rich people and not God. fix their power grid. Um, so inviting chaplains into schools, according to one advocacy group, would give kids a solid spiritual foundation and a safe space to express their pains and frustrations. I thought you didn't like safe spaces. Uh-huh. But what was interesting is recently the architect of the Texas chaplain law, which is Senator Mays Middleton. Whoa. Yep. He he looks 12. Mays? Mays. M-A-Z-E? M-A-Y-E-S. That makes more sense. He appeared on the Wall Builder Show, which is a podcast hosted by pseudo-historian David David Barton, Barton. his son Tim Barton, and another guy, a self-described constitutional coach, Rick Green. Coach? Yeah. What does that mean? uh, I don't know. He tells you how the Constitution ought to be interpreted. But Mays Middleton, during that interview, he basically admitted that the critics were right about all this. He said, and I quote, "Um, Our U.S. Supreme Court, thanks to President Trump's appointments, made it possible for us to go win some of these fights and put God back in government. Mm -hmm. He later said, Chaplains represent God in government. These atheist groups out of Washington, D.C. oppose chaplains in schools, but their legal arguments are now totally meritless, and they won't win if they try. Cool. Yeah. He added that his legislation... Fun touchdown dance he's doing. Uh, his legislation also required Texas districts to vote on whether or not they wanted to allow chaplains in schools uh, because he wanted them on the record like the individual- in case... The districts, okay. he made them take a vote. Do you want chaplains in schools? Because if they said no, he wanted them to be voted out, and he wanted to give people a reason for them to be voted out. Cool. But it's he not seems great. It's not even a choice, because he said in the same interview that if they vote against it, like, we don't want chaplains in our schools, he said litigation could follow. He said, quote... Excuse me? Yeah. He said, I know one district that's very close uh, that actually voted to ban chaplains, which... Wow, honestly, that's probably a larger risk for litigation because in that case you're prohibiting, for example, a teacher or admin administrator or somebody at the district from seeing someone based solely on their religious beliefs. And everything you just said what? was ridiculous because what one What the fuck does that mean? That one, means nothing. There are not a slew of atheist organizations in DC. They mm. do not have power. So mm-hmm. that's one thing. Or but money. second thing, no church state separation group, no atheist group would ever prevent a staffer or student from seeing a chaplain who shares their religious views. Yeah. They can always do that at church. Mm-hmm. What they can't do and shouldn't be allowed to do is use government resources to advance a religious agenda. And so to say, like, yeah, we gave these districts a choice of whether they want chaplains, he's lying about that because he's he literally is. saying, no, it's not a choice because if you say, no, we're coming after you, you could be sued it's over it. Death or cake situation. Yeah. He also said uh, schools have been worse off since, quote, prayer was taken out of our public schools in the 1960s. I think schools have been it worse off not. since 
uh, since they stopped funding schools. That too. Uh, but again, prayer was never taken out of public schools. Mm, well, uh, he's lying about that. I mean, I don't think that's a necessarily fairy thing. Like, yes, they did make, they did decide that Forced teachers prayer. can no Forced longer prayer make is taken out of school. But if a kid wants school. to pray in school, no one's stopping Of course, stopping I you. just want to make sure we're being intellectually honest. We are. They are not. We are. This dude I know. never is. This guy, by the way, Mays Middleton, has also filed bills to bring Bible reading to public schools and do away with church state separation. Uh, and he's practically just admitting, yeah, we want God in school, so let's do it through the chaplains. There's nothing wrong with that. I hate this timeline. Uh-huh. And then, mm. wait, here's the next part of this. In Iowa, they decided, you know what we should do? Be more like Texas. They advanced a bill to bring untrained chaplains to schools. And, like, in Iowa... Are Iowa and Texas having an affair? What yes. is going on here? Uh, it's same sex, oh and my God. it's weird. So weird. But when they do it... Yeah. It would allow school boards, the Iowa bill, would allow school boards to hire volunteer chaplains, quote, to provide support services, and programs for students. They don't need any kind of license. They don't need any endorsement. As long as they pass a background check and wear a hat with the word chaplain on it, they, they can have access to kids. Which, That's it. Which part was your, your addition? All right. There's nothing about a hat uh -huh. in the bill. Okay. But it, it applies. I mean, it is very scary because... I truly like. I thought these people were all about protecting children. You're having people with no training just like get in there and mess with them. If you say you're a chaplain and there's nothing that says you have to do this to be a chaplain, yeah. anyone could do it. You just have to pass a background check. Um, the I person who filed this bill, her name is Helena Hayes. She even kind of made a Freudian slip when she was pushing for the bill's passage because what she said in discussion during a small committee hearing. This bill is about ministers in the workplace. To which... What? She's basically saying, I want ministers in the workplace. She like, ministers, not chaplains, she even Why said. Why is she just so fucking horny to get ministers everywhere? They all everywhere. are. And Sarah Trone Garriott, who is a Democrat in the Iowa legislature, she's a state senator. She also happens to be a minister. She's also a former chaplain. She's also awesome. She mm. was the person who chimed in to say... The author of this bill referred to the practitioners in this bill as ministers, mm. which is specifically a Christian and Protestant Christian term. Mm. It seems to be the intent of this bill is to use the resources and institutions of the state to promote a particular religious community or religious content during the required hours of our children's education, which is a very long way of saying... I caught you. Mm. I know what you're doing here. Stop it. Well, these are very much Schrodinger's parents because they, like, on one hand, they're like, don't teach our kids about sex in school. We'll take care of that. That's not your business <laughs> to do. It should be in the home. But when it comes to religion, they're like, we're not doing enough yeah. at home. We're we cannot allow the you. Ball. We can't allow you to handle religion at home. Yeah. Let us take care of it. It's so, guys, come on. Uh, one lobbyist, because uh, they have a lot of advocates speaking out for and against this bill, and they have a they have space to do that. One person, uh, his name is Keenan Crow. He chimed in during the advocacy bit against the bill, but he he made it clear. Uh, that, you know, if you pass this bill and you don't define who a chaplain is, you know what that opens the door to. He says, guess who has a very robust chaplaincy program? The Satanic, the Satanic Temple. Temple does. And guess who's been using it in a number of different ways, including at the U.S. Naval Academy? The Satanic Temple has. I did not know that. I'm curious about Good that. Good for them. But he added, if we want Satanic ch Temple chaplains in our schools... This is the way to get them. Wow. And, and to be clear, there are satanic chaplains. I don't know that they've done anything with that. I'm curious about that. There I mean, are, though, humanist chaplains, very much so. Mm. And they've actually been basically barred from, in, from the military. That's right. But, like, church-state separation groups have repeatedly acknowledged the importance of having trained counselors and social workers. They're not the ones itching to get their chaplains in schools. They're saying... No, man, just use government funding and hire trained professionals who do this. Um, I did ask the Satanic Temple, would you take advantage of this opportunity if this bill passes? To which they responded, quote, we are interested. Nice. Um, I don't know if that'll change anything, but these people will do anything to get Jesus in schools. I don't think any of this would stop them. Such a strange goal to me. Man. And Especially then when you look at, like, 
the global marketplace. Like, it's insanity. They're trying to make American kids dumber. To what end? Hey, dumber people vote for Republicans. That's, I assume, their game theory here. (sighs) Okay. That's my theory, anyway. (laughs) Um, One last story, which is the same story, but they're also now trying to do this in Florida. Same thing, joining the affair between Iowa and Texas. Um, The bill in Florida this time... Florida's a lady. This is actually a little looser than Iowa. This This bill would give public school districts permission to adopt a policy to let them bring on volunteer school chaplains. Wait, Furthermore, are they all volunteers? They the would chaplains? all be volunteers. None of these people would be paid. Even, um, in, te- in, the even in, believe, even really? in the Texas laws? I believe even in the Texas laws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they have no qualifications. What are you paying them for? Um, yeah. Parents in, in Florida, the bill says, parents would be informed about the religious affiliations of those chaplains, which by which I... Assume that just means you'll get a sheet of paper that has all the names and Christian next to it. Yeah. And the parents would have to give permission for their children to see these chaplains, which, and all the chaplains would have to pass a background check. All that's fine. But like, again, why are we doing this? They're doing this because they want chaplains in schools to do the work that social workers and counselors ought to be doing Mm. and would be doing if Florida had them. Um, by the way, I looked this up. According to the National Association of School Psychologists, there is one psychologist for every 1,828 Florida students. That is more than three times the number of students than the recommended ratio. So they have a lack of qualified, trained workers in Florida to handle the caseload. Mm. And what are Florida lawmakers doing? By the way, Florida also has a budget surplus. What are they doing? They do. They are not training. They are not hiring new social workers and counselors. They are saying, what if we let Christians just do the job for them? Because, like, we know what causes every act of depression by a child, Mm. Satan. So why don't we just have our people take care of it? And better yet... What hurdles do you need to overcome to be a chaplain in Mm. a public school? Nothing. There's no ordination required. You just have to have the hat with the word chaplain on it. Mm -hmm. I assume that is in the bill. I don't know. I mean, now that I think about it, I actually have a a tag that says chaplain on it because I'm ordained. Slap it on your shirt. I have a parking pass somewhere. Oh, I should use that much more. Just park Uh, in front of Target. (laughs) Hello. the, The Republican who sponsored this bill... Uh, in the state Senate. Her name is Erin Grawl. She's also one of the uh, vehemently anti-abortion lawmakers. I think she's the one who sponsored the bill to drop uh, the abortion law in Florida from like, you can have it after 15 weeks to you can only have it after six weeks. Fuck you. Yes. So this is the person we're talking about. She actually embraced the idea that these volunteer chaplains would replace trained professionals. Mm. She said... I view this as an alternative to mental health counselors. I mean, what about the suggestion that chaplains could give students bad advice because they don't know what they're doing? She said, what happens when our children receive the wrong advice from a mental health counselor? What are you talking about? As opposed to... I don't know. Teachers make mistakes, therefore let's replace them with pastors. It's the same argument. Like, humans make mistakes. No one's saying they're perfect. Mm. But trained counselors... Christians think they're perfect. The fact that they're trained help them make fewer mistakes. Yeah. And And, (laughs) and not even fewer mistakes, but There's accountability. Yeah. And, I mean... God knows. Have you ever like had a conversation with somebody who just read like a new self help book and that's all they're talking about and thinking about? Like this is the future for our students. Right. I mean, in Texas, where we talked about where a similar bill has become law, religious chaplains are literally begging districts not to go through with it because they understand that if you want to see kids thrive, then throwing faith based services at them by way of untrained people is not the way to do it. Mm-hmm. And again, anyone. In all these states can already see religious chaplains. Just go to church. Um, American atheists... Or send your kid to a Christian school, if that's important to you. Yeah. American atheist Florida assistant state director Devin Graham told a local news outlet, I personally don't want to see an untrained chaplain telling my child or my children they are unworthy or to stigmatize them, which I think is a fair criticism because if you're untrained and you think God is the answer to everything, what do you do when a kid says, no, I don't believe in this shit? Like, of course you're going to say there's something wrong with them. Mm -hmm. Um, Incidentally, this is not Republicans only, because in the House version 
of this Florida bill. There are two conservative Democrats uh, who are basically functional Republicans who have co-sponsored this bill. The Senate version just got approved by the Education Committee. The only thing that was removed in their version that was passed was the part that forced districts to vote on it. They got rid of that, which is nice, Mm -hmm. but also the Senate's version is still bad. In fact, get this. This is another example of a Democrat who knows what she's talking about saying this is a bad bill. Democratic Senator Rosalind Osgood, who has a master's degree in divinity, is a former Broward County school board member and served as chaplain for the Fort Lauderdale Police Department, voted against the bill. Wow. Yeah. She said it puts school districts in a position that takes their attention away from education. Mm -hmm. Now the school board is focused on chaplaincy instead of education. She also warned about widely different interpretations of religious beliefs among Christians, such as Baptist organizations that don't want women being pastors, Mm -hmm. people using religion divisively. I mean, kudos to her. Again, this is the sort of bill you file when you want to serve red meat to a conservative Christian base, not when you want to help students. And for all the GOP talk of we need better mental health care, which is what they say after every school shooting, they're now advancing a bill that would replace professionals best suited to deal with mental health Mm -hmm. with untrained religious people who don't know the first thing about the subject. It hurts the students who would need the help the most. Yeah, uh, Florida is ranked 42 in education. Mm, Climbing up Um, the ladder there. I truly, though, I almost got fooled because I put Florida school rankings And I found a thing that says that, uh, oh, where did it go? I don't know, but Satanists could also register as a chaplain in any of these Where Florida school ranks in, oh, never mind. Go ahead. I just saw a thing that was stupid. There's nothing stopping Satanists from jumping in, from humanist chaplains from jumping into the fray here. The difference is these groups actually want to help students, so they're not trying to do this. Uh Uh, It's the Christian chaplains who want access to kids that people should be worried about a lot more. Yeah, that's wild. So I know today's episode has a lot of the same story repeated, but what can I say? Republicans are just doing the same thing over and over. I don't know what to do. Hmm. So there you go. I think I'm done for now. Okay. I'm reading about the new... Like, there's some places say Florida is number one in education, but I don't understand what that yeah. means. Yeah, I want to know the metrics for that yeah, one. Yeah, like, it, there. I saw something that was, like, number one in educational freedom is what I saw. Oh, I was yeah, trying yeah. to find again. According and to the, the list Ron DeSantis pulled out of his ass. There you is. go. I found it. FL Gov. Today's <laughs> edition recognized Florida ranked number one in the nation for education by News and World Report. Yeah, so U.S. Strange. News is not a legit publication. We don't have to cite them for anything. No, it's just um, one of those things of like, why Why do you say number one? What does that mean to you? But nothing. maybe I shouldn't be doing research it's, live on mic. Hmm. Yeah, right. Um, I want to go to bed. <laughs> what are we talking about in the bonus? Oh, fuck. We're um, talking about taste. Taylor. Yeah, I just, I feel like a lot is going on with Taylor Swift, and I'm just frustrated with people acting like she's the big bad in the world right now. And like, it's just short-sighted and misogynistic. And then, I don't know, I'm reading Killers of the Flower Moon. Maybe I'll talk. I don't know. Uh, Did I see any movies? I saw Donnie Darko the other night for the second time. Um, End of list. I want to go to bed. Excellent. All right. We'll see you all next week. Bye. Sorry. (laughs) 